Hello, my name's Mark and I am GK Tutor. And I'm here with Practical Machinists today to continue some more of this series on making this part using G-Code. So in this lesson, we're gonna program a center draw operation line by line using G-Code, and this is how we do it. Okay, so let's jump straight in and start this lesson. So I always start off each sequence with an N number and I use this as a search function. So we can push N5 and the down arrow on the fanatic controls to search for this section of our code. Now each section has an N number and I tie that into the tool number. So as long as I know the tool number, I can quickly search through the program. So after my end number, I have an operator's note. Now this is a section of brackets that tells the operator what's happening in this sequence. It doesn't tell the machine because it's in brackets, it's not readable. And of course, after that, we end in an end of block, the semicolon there at the end of the line. So this tells the machine it's the end of this block of code. Now in CNC speak, we call a block a single line of code. So I use them interchangeably throughout this lesson. Okay, so now the next line I always have is my safety line. Now the safety line sets the machine up in a safe state. So if we stop the machine in the middle of a cycle, for example, and we restart from a different part of the program, it will read that safety line and turn off that cycle before we continue reading the rest of the program. So these safety lines are really useful for jumping in and out the program when we're not running a program in sequence, when we're doing tryouts, when we're testing things out, um, and all the way through, running of the program as well. So say for example, we want to take an extra cut on a bore, we can simply do that without worrying about any cycles that may be active. So I've started there with G54, which is our datum. Now this is our work shift datum. So we've set this to zero at the front face of the part. G90 tells the machine we wish to use absolute coordinate system and not incremental. G97 puts our machine into RPM mode on the spindle. So if we have G96 active, our constant surface cutting speed, it will turn that off and go back to standard RPM mode for our spindle, which is perfect for drilling by the way. And then we have G20, which selects imperial units. G21 would be used if we're working in metric. Now G80 cancels any active cycles. So if we have a drilling cycle that may be active, it will cancel that before it reads the rest of this sequence. And then G40 turns off our cutter compensation. And if it's not active, it doesn't matter. It's just making sure it's turned off anyway. And then that's our safety line complete. Your safety line might be different, depends on our requirements, depends on the machine. But for this part on my machine, this is the safety line that sets everything up so it's a safe working environment to read the rest of the sequence. Okay, so let's have a look at our first tool call. So we're gonna use T05 to bring in tool five into our machine. And the second 05 there calls the information from the datum table. This tells the machine all the information of the tool, where the cutting edge is, etc. so it cuts correctly. And by doing an MO6 after that, it now rotates the turret, so it puts tool five on the center line, so it's bringing down our center drill, so it's in the center line ready to start cutting. So MO3 is the command we use to turn on the spindle in a clockwise direction. Now quite often with slaves, we might load our tools upside down. If that's the case, you need to use MO4 for here, because the spindle will be need to turn in a different direction. And our S value at the end of this line here is set in the spindle speed. So MO3 followed by an S value turns on the spindle at the set speed. And in this case, 850 RPM. So this next line, we're gonna start moving the tool around inside the machine. So we're gonna start off with rapid move, our G00 line. And now we're going to rapid to X0. Now X0 is normally the center line of a lathe, I've never worked a lathe where it wasn't classed as X0, but I'm sure there are probably uh, niche cases out there where we might need to. So um, X0 is a center line on the machine, so we're bringing the tool down to the center line, and we're also wrapping it in to half an inch away from that front face, and then we turn on the coolant with MO8. Now this next line, it, you can wrap it straight to um, 40 foul off the face of the part if you wish. The reason I do this in two lines is mainly for safety. 
I can see if that tool is approaching half an inch away from the front of the part. I can't see if it's approaching 40 thousandths of an inch away from the front of the part. As it's approaching the part, you can look at the machine, feed rate low, a rapid low, and you can see it's going into, into position. So I know it's not gonna collide. So I do this as a safety precaution and bringing in the center drill on two lines, so it's a closer move on the second line, doesn't slow the part down at all. Um, it would see these lines almost as, as the same line in the machine. It would come down to um, half an inch away and then straight away move 40 thousandth of an inch away. But doing it on two lines means we can use single block. It means we can see the tool coming in a lot clearer and it's a lot safer in my opinion to do it this way. Okay, so with our tool really close to the part there, it's only a millimeter off, 40 thousandths of an inch, we're then going to start cutting. So for that, we're gonna use G01, our linear travel command for G code. So this means we're going to be using a feed rate now once we're using G01. So we're going to take a cut at 0.2 depth. Now, where our zero point is on that end face of our part, we're taking 0.2 depth of a cut with this uh, move here. And of course, we've got to give it a feed rate because we're using G01. So the feed rate I'm giving it here is four thousandths of an inch per revolution of our chuck. So with our hole drilled and our center drill currently at full depth of its drilled hole, it's time to remove it from the material and bring it out. So again, I'm going back to G00 for this, a rapid travel. I'm going to wrap it away to half an inch away from the front face of the part. So this gives us plenty of clearance now. So when we take the tool away back to its tool change position, we can see it's not inside the part anymore. Okay, so let's do that move back to the tool change position. So I'm gonna call a different datum now. We're calling the machine datum of G53. So this is usually where our tool change happen at X0, Z0 on the machine datum. Not always, but usually. So on my machine, certainly the tool change is at the zero position of the machine datum. So I'm setting the machine datum and then X0, Z0 to take the turret back to that position ready for its next tool change for when we do the next operation. Now I end this line with MO9, so we turn the coolant off at this point. We could have turned it off on the line above, um, I mainly use coolant control where I turn it on and off for visibility. I like to see my cutters come in before they start cutting without any coolant splashing up on my screen. So I popped my MO9 at the end of this line. So now we need to turn off the spindle. We're gonna use MO5 for that. That spindle uh, will turn off with an MO5 command. And finally, MO1, which is my optional stop command. Now I always end each sequence with an MO1. Now we don't necessarily need to optional stop after each sequence, but we have the option. And that's the great thing about optional stops. We can push that button on the control and stop the machine after each sequence if we wish. So maybe we want to check dimensions, blow some swarf out of holes, make sure the cutter or the tip of the tool is in good condition. So having an MO1 at the end of each sequence is very useful. We can just push that button on the controls and um, get, our, get inside the machine there to check. So if you enjoyed this lesson and you want to know more, I have a series of courses over on my website at gcodetutor.com where I teach G-code programming, computer-aided design, machine shop mathematics, and even tool calibration. So I have a bunch of courses over there, plus a great free course that introduce you to a uh, lot of things that I teach. And I, of course, I have lots of free articles and lots of free videos as well. So it's a great resource for your G-Code programming and machinist theory knowledge. So pop over to gcodetutor.com.